for a total maximum exposure of 120 years in prison. Were you aware of that, Mr. Williams? Yes. And Your Honor, at this time, the state is making a recommendation of 45 years with 25 to serve in custody, followed by 20 on probation, subject to the special requirements of 1615-4, the gang statute. 120 years? I, I probably would have took the plea too. Man. If you're new, make sure y'all hit that notification bell, that like, share, comment, and subscribe. Grab a seat. We finna dig deep. What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Jay. And man, y'all know we got to definitely talk about the shocking update and turn of events in this young thug, YSL Rico trial. Now, after what seemed to be like an endless fight for his freedom, young thug has finally been released. Now, after an emotional plea and his attorney is definitely standing up and fighting on his behalf until the very end, young thug actually just walked out of the courtroom a free man. Back to his family, his art, and his life, but his freedom isn't without condition. Leave it to the state. Now, he is on probation with the state. So we'll talk about that and what that means for the future of this case and what's next in the trial for the last two defendants who decide to take it all the way. Y'all know the vibes. Before we dig too deep, y'all make sure y'all tap that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed, and definitely tap that notification bell so you don't miss a drop whenever we drop. Y'all know the vibes. Grab a seat. We finna dig deep. All right. It is my understanding that uh, the state and Mr. Williams were very close to a negotiated agreement. All right. Um, Mr. Steele, Mr. Adams, Mr. Williams, where are we? Ready to go forward? All right. Y'all coming up here to the podium. Jeffrey Williams, J E F F E R Y W I L L I A M S. Your Honor, with respect to the charges um, that Mr. Williams faces, count one carries a minimum charge of five years and a maximum charge of 20 years in prison or up to a $25,000 fine or both. Um, isn't it a $15,000 fine because wasn't it the version of the statute in effect at the time or was that the same for Rico? Was Rico 25? Yes, Rico okay. was 25. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Count 56 carries a minimum sentence of five years in prison, a maximum of 20 years in prison consecutive to any other sentence with a fine of $10,000 to $15,000 or both. Okay. Count 57 carries a minimum sentence of five years in prison and a minimum maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. Count 58 carries a minimum sentence of one and a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. Count 59 carries a sentence range of five to 30 years in prison. Count 60 carries a sentence range. slow down just a second. Now, we definitely got a salute to the YSL defense team because Adams and Steele definitely did their thing. Actually standing up in front of the judge, even though the state actually presented this information like it was supposed to be open and closed, but they still made sure they stood on business reiterating that we don't believe that the state's facts or evidence is actually true. We're not agreeing to it. We just think that this may be in the best interest of our client. Even more ironic to sit up in here still actually say, hey, this wasn't even my idea because the defense is clearly winning this case. This is all up to thug. Man, imagine had this went the other way. Would this have been a cost of mistake for the defense or an actual W for the state? Yes. Okay. And are you also known as Young Thug? Yes. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medication? No. Is there any medication that you normally take that you have not been given today? No. How old are you? 33. And how far have you gone in school? Nine. Say that one more time. Nine. Okay. Are you able to read, write, and understand the English language? Yes. All right. Do you understand that you are charged with the following offenses? Conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, participation in criminal street gang activity, the leadership charge, participation in criminal street gang activity, 
violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act, three counts, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, and possession of a machine gun. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Have you been arrested on these charges? Yes. The state is unaware of any outstanding warrants related to these charges. Do you or your attorneys know of any outstanding warrants related to these charges? Any what? Outstanding warrants related to any of the charges in the indictment. No, no, I don't believe so either, Your Honor. Okay. And I'm unaware of any as well, Your Honor. I am as well. Thank you. Count 60 carries a range of one to five years in prison. Count 61 carries a mandatory five years consecutive uh, to the underlying felony. Count 62 carries a sentence of 10 years consecutive for a total maximum exposure of 120 years in prison. Were you aware of that, Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Williams, do you understand that this is a non-negotiated plea of guilty and that if since your plea, your guilty plea is a blind plea or a non-negotiated plea, the state is making a recommendation of sentencing to the court, notwithstanding the fact that this is a blind plea? You understand that, Mr. Williams? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Williams, were you aware of the state's previous offer that was turned down prior to your making this non-negotiated plea? Yes. All right. And Your Honor, at this time, the state is making a recommendation of 45 years with 25 to serve in custody, followed by 20 on probation, subject to the special requirements of 1615-4, the gang statute. All right, and do you want to break down for me what your recommended sentence on each count is? Yes, Your Honor. The state is recommending on count one, five years to serve. Count 56, 20 years to serve consecutively to count one. Count 57, five years of probation to serve consecutively to count six, 56. Count 58, 10 years of probation to serve concurrently with count 57. Count 59, five years of probation to serve concurrently with count 57 and 58. Mr. Williams, did you discuss the state's previous offer with your attorneys? Yes. Okay. All right, and, and so we're all clear that we're talking about the same thing. Can you put what the state's previous offer was on the record for me, please? I can, Your Honor. Thank you. The state's previous offer was a total of 43 years with 20 to serve, I'm sorry, 20 years, um, five years to serve on count 56, commuted to time served, followed by 15 years on probation. On count 58, the sentence was 10 years to serve in the Georgia Department of Corrections, consecutive to count 56. Count 59 was three years to serve in the Georgia Department of Corrections, consecutive to counts 56 and 58. Count 60 was five years to serve in the Georgia Department of Corrections, consecutive to counts 56, 58, and 59. Count 61 was five years to serve in the Georgia Department of Corrections, consecutive to counts 56, 58, 59, and 60. Was that the entirety of no. what the sentence was? No, no Your Honor. I mean, I'm I know there reading. were special conditions, so y'all were there doing null pros, we, what, yeah, one yeah. and 62? Yes, as okay. part of the recommended sentence in exchange for the defendant agreeing to the special conditions that we asked the court to impose, the state was willing to null pros count one, count 57, and count 62. Okay, and then all of that consecutive um, to the probation, that was going to be what we call backloaded, and what were y'all what were y'all proposing with regard to that, since it was the total, follow the probated sentence? The total sentence was 43 years to serve, with the first five years in prison commuted to time served, followed by 15 years on probation, followed by 23 years in prison, which would have been served in confinement, except that if defendant had complied with the special conditions of probation imposed as part of this sentence, the backloaded portion of defendant's sentence would have been commuted. However, should defendant had violated any special condition of probation with the first 
within the first 15 years of his sentence, his probated sentence would have immediately been revoked and he would have been required to serve the entire remainder of his sentence confined to the Georgia Department of Corrections. All right. So as long as he uh, had successfully completed his 15 years of probation, the uh, 23 years that was going to follow it was going to be commuted to time served as long as his probation was successful. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And the special with the court like for us to No, I was really more interested in the um, the length of sentence and, and what y'all had. Um, I mean, I know you didn't reach agreement, but y'all, that's what the last offer had been with, of course, a bunch of special conditions, which I guess is where the hangout is. I don't know. Right. Defendant okay. did not want to agree to okay. the special conditions. All right. Is that basically your understanding too? Mr. Yes, Your Honor. Steele it would have been. Adams. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Williams uh, would have been released today for 15 years on probation if he successfully completes that probation then he would not have to go to custody. If he did not, he'd face probation revocation as well as 23 years, as the um, court said, backloaded in the Georgia prison system. But okay. we could not come to terms on all the conditions that the district attorney was insisting upon. Okay. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea because you are, in fact, guilty? Yes. Well, Your Honor, may I interject? You may. Your Honor, on count one, which is the racketeering conspiracy count, Mr. Williams is tendering a plea under nolo contendere as to count 56, which is participation in a criminal street gang activity as being a leader or a supervisor or organizer. Mr. Williams is also tendering a plea to this honorable court as under nolo contendere, the balance of the count, so he is tendering a guilty plea. Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Would the court like to hear from the state or not? Um, about the NOLO issues? Yes. yes. Sure. Your Honor, the state uh, asked that the court um, not accept a NOLO plea and require either a guilty plea or a not guilty plea as to these charges. All right. I'm going to permit a NOLO plea as to counts 1 and 56. All right. Mr. Williams. As to count... Fifty-seven participation in criminal street gang activity. How do you plead? I plead guilty. As to count fifty-eight, violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. How do you plead? Guilty. As to count fifty-nine, <clears throat> violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. How do you plead? Guilty. As to count sixty, violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. How do you plead? Guilty. As to count 61, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, how do you plead? Guilty. And as to count one, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, how do you plead? No law. As to count 56, participation in criminal street gang activity under the leadership charge, how do you plead? No law. All right. I think you didn't ask about count 62. As to count, thank you, Your Honor. As to count 62, possession of a machine gun, how do you plead? Guilty. And, Your Honor, um, the state, in addition to um, the sentence we are asking that the court to impose, okay. we would um, also be asking the court to um, require or to forfeit, have defendant forfeit all of the property that has been seized and that is currently being held um, that was found or recovered or taken from his home after it was searched on May 9th. Um, Do you have any kind of list of what that property is? I mean, I'm not familiar with what was seized. And Your Honor, we're we, not, we we're not do, agreeing. And that, Oh, I, know, I mean, I assume y'all aren't agreeing to anything. We're not agreeing to that. Present it as a negotiated plea. We're not. But we do have a list of the All right. property items. Do you have it where available right now? Yes. Actually, would the court permit us to send it electronically? Sure, because that's we fine. And then um, if that is not imposed as a condition, is it just get litigated as like any forfeiture matter? Yeah, it's yeah it would be litigated it's later a, on. Yes. It's a civil separate filing okay. in this court. It's not related to the crime. Right. It's related case, but it's unrelated. Understood. Now, that was wild for the prosecutor to actually say that. Right now, you're going to bring up a civil issue in the process of this man fighting to try to get his freedom in the middle of a plea. Again, you have to salute the defense for not actually even biting that bait. 
How you going to put this man out on probation after two years, all this money spent, and you want to freeze his assets? That'll put him in the streets? Kind of confused. Was that a setup from the state that they tried to bake early with their cake? Let's dig. And as it relates to the um, conditions of a conviction under 1615-4, Your Honor, we would ask, or as part of the sentence, defendant would be required to adhere to the uh, requirements, the sentencing requirements of the gang statute, which um, at least in part require that he not associate with any um, gang members whatsoever. And I can read the rest of that into the record if the court requires, or I can continue with a factual basis. Right. Yo, stop what you're doing real quick, real quick, real quick. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's free. Hit the like button, share the video, hit the like button. Let's dig. Corrupt and cause harm and to shoot up Lil Wayne's tour bus. Lil Wayne was another artist with whom Mr. Williams was having conflict According to the testimony that had been presented, um, Mr. Williams had come out at that time with a mixtape that carried the name of a, uh, an album that Mr. Carter was set to release and was not able to because his label would not allow that to happen. That caused a contractual or the threat of a lawsuit it caused Mr. Williams angst. He posted about it. He said derogatory things about the persons who were threatening him with the lawsuit. And as a result, he had to rename his mixtape to something different than what he initially intended. Um, the person who ultimately was convicted of shooting that tour bus up With respect to the Donovan Thomas murder, the court has heard evidence uh, through phone records that within six minutes of the shooting of Donovan Thomas Jr., a phone call was made from Demise McMullen's cell phone to Defendant Williams' phone. And then immediately after that call, Mr. Williams calls his sister, Dora Greer, and then calls Kelvin Treadwell. There is then a series of calls between Dora Greer and Treadwell, and then Treadwell calls Demise McMullen or Nard. All of those calls happen within 15 minutes of the 911 call. And as I have stated before, the court has heard accomplice prior inconsistent statements about who committed the murder itself. Mr. Williams is involved. Mr. Williams gives a statement. The state refuses to put it in and then stopped me, the previous judge, from cross-examining the detective. His name is Racy. He met with Mr. Williams in the DeKalb County Jail on the 15th day of July 2015. Mr. Williams is arrested that day. And there's a long interview. And Mr. Williams waives his right to counsel. He tells him, I'm his lawyer. They say, you don't want to speak to us? You don't have to. He said, well, I'll speak with you. And they asked Mr. Williams these questions. What about Little Wayne shooting? He said, it was outrageous. I love him. That's, that's my idol. I love Little Wayne. How about this battle? He says, it's promotion. They asked him about his rap lyrics. It's the only person that the state ever did anything about rap lyrics with. And they asked Mr. Williams, what about the rap lyrics? And he tells them, it's hyperbole. He didn't use that word. He used the word, it's made up. It's rhyming. It's made up. Not like the state is saying that I rap lyrics for real. That's not even Mr. Williams' utterance. Your Honor, the point I'm trying to make to you is what the state of Georgia has presented to this jury in this courtroom the past year has been full of untruths. And they know it. This, the state says that Mr. Williams had a conflict because he named an album with uh, Dwayne Carter. Dwayne Carter didn't like that. Dwayne Carter's interviewed. He said that was... One of the nicest things anyone could have done to me, it shows how much he really appreciates me. It shows respect and honor, and I appreciate what he did. The state knows this. Ooh, so why is it still? It's definitely still cooking. Can somebody please tell still to turn the stove off? The state is overcooked. They're done. Put a fork in them. They were done when they dropped the play last week. This is why they asked the drop in these pleas to clean up their mistake. But that's another story. It's still correct. How long have we actually witnessed the state misrepresent, misstate, and misuse actual factual evidence? They use the pieces that actually paint their narrative and shape the narrative, but they leave the context parts out. Is he correct on what he's arguing? Yeah, jump in the comments, let me know.
Imagine being the prosecutor, the state of the judge actually having to hit this on record right here at the end where you know everybody's paying attention. Whew. Can we say W for the defense? Let's dig. Mr. Williams' role. Mr. Williams, there is evidence in the record, and there would have been more. He takes people on tour with him. He takes people in the mall with him. But when they do crime or do things to people, for instance, there was a prostitute. And several people gave that prostitute money, $500. And the prostitute at the end of the $500, getting $500 from several people, had sex with a person. And then she was arm robbed. So all the money came back. Mr. Williams wasn't involved in that, but he heard about it. He made those people find a prostitute and repaid her every dime. People stole from stores that Mr. Williams found about. That he, had, he went to the stores and he repaid all that. He didn't steal anything. He doesn't need to steal anything. Your Honor, Mr. Williams stands with Elton John. Elton John called Mr. Williams the next coming of John Lennon. Mr. Williams is unbelievable talent. He's not just a rap artist. In fact, when he's interviewed in 2017, he gives a statement and he says, I had to learn rap. He grew up in a house learning other forms of music. He likes all music, but rap hit in his community, and his community raised him. They supported him. They came out to him. They made him get into establishments, and once the establishment saw all the people come out, he got more establishments. And then he went out of that little area in Atlanta to other parts of Georgia, and then to all the neighboring states and throughout our country, and he has performed on every continent but one. He has performed in front of being the headliner, 300,000 people at one time. He has a real life and career. He is not the leader, and he is not worried about buying jewelry that is stolen. Mr. Williams is actually innocent. I'm not trying to corrupt our plea. That's his plea, and it's, he's entitled to it, and he wants it, and he embraces it. But to me, this is a wrongful prosecution. This is outrageous. All right, so you're pleading guilty, or your client is pleading guilty, to counts 57 through 62. It's all true. Do you... Yes, concede, there's a factual there's basis, a factual basis I can for see, those counts. Yes, I can see that. Okay. All right, I mean, Hi, Mr. Williams, is there anything that you want to say? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I take full responsibility for, you know, my crimes or my charges. Uh, I want to say sorry to my family, my mom. My mom got 11 kids. I can say all their names, you know. My managers, my kids is not here. Uh, Really, everybody that got something to do with this situation, I want to say sorry for just, like, you know, being, having so much time investing into this, you know. And um, I am a, a, a smart guy. I am a good guy. And I really got a good heart, you know. I, I find myself in a lot of stuff because, because I was just nice or cool, you know. And I understand that you can't be that way when you reach a certain height because it could end bad. And it, and it don't really have to have anything to do with you, but it could end bad and it could, you know, fall on you. And I know the choice is yours, is up to you, and, and just trust in me to just do the right thing and never see you again unless it's, unless it's at a, you know, bar in the future or something. Just out of this type of situation, I promise you I won't ever be in this type of situation again. I'm, I'm going away. I've learned from my mistakes. You know, I come from nothing and I made something and I didn't take full advantage of it. I'm sorry. Uh, know what I am, I know the heights I've reached, I know the impact I got on people, period, in the community, you know, all people. I learned that late, like past, these past two or three years of my life, I kind of learned that late, and maybe it was because I was, you know, probably on drugs or anything, I don't know, but I have came to my senses and I understand what I mean to this world, but I am a good guy, you know, I, I, I don't mind doing stuff like, you know, like, uh, free shows, and I always did that. You know, I, I did free shows and gave it to single parents, millions of dollars. You know, I made $1.8 million on, on a free show, and I gave it all to single parent charity. And I did, like, two or three shows that made, like, 700000 a piece, and I gave it to uh, the breast cancer organization. Like, you know, I, I, I do things. Like I put millions of dollars back into my community for real. I really did. I did more than anybody ever did from my side, you know? But I understand, you know, rap lyrics. I understand how it could be twisted. I understand what it could do to the mind of people. I understand all that, and I'm, I promise you I'm 100% changing that. You know, it's just I'm older. I'm grown now, you know, and it's just like I'm smarter. It's more things to rap about. Like, I, I've experienced a lot of good things. I experienced more bad things, but I experienced a lot of good things, too. And anyway, I can, I can go for forever. Well, I can go for forever. Well, I appreciate it. And um, 
I appreciate that you do realize how much of an impact you have on people. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's past your neighborhood. It's worldwide, especially young people. And having come up from where you came up from and living in and around. What's even more ironic is to actually sit up and listen to Young Thug as he actually spoke for the first time. A lot of people haven't actually heard his voice, so to actually be able to hear him speak and actually speak intellectually, I think the judge herself was actually impressed just over that, for him to be sitting back. Plus, these are charges from when he was, what, a teenager from years back? Plus, the state still failed to connect the dots with Nick. They still didn't get any type of admittance on the RICO conspiracy gang leader, but they just got you tapped out to please. Plus, you get to leave. Back to your family, back to the industry, back to the music, back to what you believe. Man, this deal was definitely a sweet deal for the thug, in my personal opinion. Man, 120 years whew, to being put out on probation, commuted to time served. Whew, interesting. First thing I do is fill out my paperwork to change probation officers. I'm not staying here. You see what they just put me through for two years with no evidence that actually linked me to any of what they said, but it was enough factual evidence for me to cop out with a plea. Psh, man, this did. This trial, at least since I've been involved, to plead guilty. Um, our Uniform Superior Court rules instruct and provide that it is absolutely proper for a judge to grant leniency in sentencing when, quote, the interests of the public and the effective administration of criminal justice are served, unquote. And I think that this plea is in the interest of the public and in the interest of effective administration of justice. Um, have been trying to ensure that to the extent I can, this trial also abides by that. It's been challenging at certain times. Um, I find your plea to be freely, knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily entered with an understanding of the consequences, and I accept it as such. I also need to inform you that your attorneys were going to represent you through either the last day of this term of court or 30 days from now, whichever is later, and any of the filings that were mentioned um, that need to be filed within that time, they would file on your behalf unless they are permitted to withdraw from representing you before that time. Um, I am not going to impose the conditions suggested by your counsel about the benefit concerts and the donations to the sheriff's office, but I certainly strongly encourage you to do those things um, and to do and continue to do things that benefit your community and especially help young people to stay out of criminal trouble. And unless there is anything from counsel other than that. Your Honor, um, with regards to Mr. Williams being permitted to come to the Metro Atlanta area yes. or Cleveland Avenue area for funeral or the other items, right. can you also consider, uh, God forbid, there's a serious medical condition of a person? That uh, in is, his um, immediate family, yeah. certainly, we can add that. And I also meant to mention, um, because I know you do travel all over in order to um, pursue your career, that um, it's permissible for your probation to be transferred to out of state, and that has to be done through probation, but um, that is fine with the court. And um, you may also keep your, nobody's mentioned it, but keep your passport and travel um, out of state and internationally to the extent that you need to do that for business purposes as well. All right, um, Mr. Boddy. Yes, very briefly, thank you. Uh, the district attorney just wanted me to uh, urge the court um, due to the fact that uh, the Thomases have been negatively affected incredibly dramatically by um, what has been discussed by both parties here today uh, to make a brief statement as uh, she believes uh, that they fall within the exception or within the bounds of uh, Marcy's law. Um, if the court would allow, um, I understand the court uh, made a, a ruling earlier uh, as it relates to that, uh, but she wants uh, to correct as well. All right. Thank you. Um, and I, I appreciate, well, I cannot even begin to understand what they must um anybody must be going through when they lose a family member to violence or criminal violence. Um, Mr. Williams himself has expressed his own sorrow to the family. Uh, I, again, am going to stand by my belief that the appropriate time to hear a victim impact statement from them is at the close of the trial that contains the murder count with regard to their family member. Yes, All right. Thank you. Okay, court is adjourned. Good luck to you. And I'm going to have any, there better be no.
violations. But if there are any, you're coming back to see me. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, you're now, this was one of those moments in the trial that the jury definitely should have been in here for. To hear his words, to hear him speak. You could tell his words. The entire courtroom felt his words. The prosecutors felt his words. The judge, the defense, the other defendant. This man really spoke from his heart and letting you know that he was actually truly sorry for what he's done, what he's put everybody else through. He even apologized to Nut's family as well. Man, takes a lot for any one person just to admit that they wrong, especially apologizing in public right behind it. Now, to actually hear him speak about his dreams, his ambitions, his career, his family, his goals, giving back to these different societies, these different communities, that's definitely impactful. For the judge to say, you don't even have to do it, but I suggest you do. How you suggest that he do something that he already voluntarily does anyways? Another story. But if y'all was like me, man, I was sitting on the edge of my seat waiting to see, man, what is this judge about to actually say? What's she about to do? I was waiting on the big butt or the whatever or however, because that's all you hear with this trial. With it comes from the state and the judge, but whatever, however. And I was always taught that the word but in a sentence or however or whatever definitely negates what you're saying anyways. But judge, she actually surprised me, so I got to actually give it to her. I was actually impressed by the YSL defense team. The state, I was almost impressed too until they tried to freeze the man's assets while he's trying to get free. But other than that, man, the state actually came out and they actually played this fair. The trial itself was definitely not fair. Still a lot of situations that they still have to go through. But overall, at the end of the day, Young Thug is free. Man, probation, five years time served phew, from 120 years. It's clear that the state was clearly about to railroad each one of these defendants that actually took these pleas. So again, where's Rico and where's the conspiracy? Till next time, man, y'all jump in the comments. Let me know y'all's thoughts. Tap that free thug button. Make sure y'all put that in the comments. Hit the like button if you haven't hit the like button as well. Subscribe to the channel and definitely tap that notification bell so you'll get the drops whenever we drop. Just because this time possibly stopped doesn't mean that we did work just getting started. So until next time, remember, the greater the height, the greater the weight. The life you save might be your very own. And as I said, I'm your host, Jay. Gone.